Healthcare in America is the most expensive in the world. According to the World Health Organization, the United States ranks 37th in healthcare, right above Slovenia and right below Costa Rica. The United States healthcare system is actually more complicated than most. The United States has what is called a multi-payer system, where healthcare is divided between the public and the private sector. Things like Medicaid and Medicare are in the public sector, and insurance companies like Blue Cross Blue Shield and Aetna are in the private sector. About 60% of Americans have private insurance. About 15% of Americans are on Medicare, which is America's health care system for the elderly. And about 18% of Americans are on Medicaid, America's health care system for the poor. That leaves about 7% of Americans uninsured, or roughly 23 million people. Medicaid is complicated. What the law does is it says to states, expand Medicaid for the folks that uh, just wrote you those, uh, those letters, and the federal government will give you a 100% match, meaning the state won't have to put out any outlays and your citizens will be insured. And for political reasons, a number of the states have chosen not to take us up on that. As of 2018, 32 states in D.C. have accepted the Medicaid expansion. 18 states have not. One hundred percent of the Medicaid expansion was covered by the federal government until January 1st, 2018. After that, the federal government covered 90 percent of the costs, leaving the rest to the states. The limit a person can make to receive the Medicaid expansion is $16,882, or the federal poverty level. States that haven't expanded Medicaid have less access to care. A person living in poverty in Texas would not qualify for Medicaid. Well, at the same time, that same person living in Minnesota would qualify for the Medicaid expansion. This is fundamentally unfair. Everyone living in the United States should have equal access to care. Medicare is the closest we have to a single payer system. Single payer is a system in which a single public or quasi-public agency organizes health care, but the delivery of care remains largely in private hands. So let's talk a little bit about how Medicare is run. Medicare Part A covers you if you are hospitalized. It's pretty much free if you're over 65, and almost everyone over 65 is eligible for coverage. Medicare Part B covers outpatient services, sometimes deferred by people who still get insurance from their jobs and has a pretty low deductible. And coinsurance is 20%. Medicare Part C, aka Medicare Advantage, is an opportunity for private companies to offer Medicare-like benefits to consumers as an alternative, and if they can do it cheaper than the government, they get to keep the profits. Medicare Part D, contains the prescription drug plans designed and run by the private insurance companies, though it is approved and paid for by the federal government. Beneficiaries get to choose the plan that best suits them. The cost of Medicare in 2018 was $539 billion. The cost of Medicaid in 2018 was $499 billion. That leaves a total health spending of $1.1 trillion. Remember that for later. There is a central problem with health insurance when CEOs of these companies can make millions and millions of dollars by denying people health insurance. That is why I want to talk about the flaw of for-profit health insurance. So let me put this into perspective and give you an example of how profits can eat away the core of an industry. Private prisons, an industry that is completely morally bankrupt. Why does this continue to happen? Because over and over again, they choose profits over people. Consider this. 
The private prison industry makes money by keeping people locked up, while at the same time, the for-profit insurance industry makes money by denying people vital health insurance. The similarities between these two industries is concerning, and ultimately, this is wrong, and as a nation, we must do better. Single-payer, Medicare for all, could be the answer. A very easy concept everybody can understand and what it really means is we're going to have private delivery of care for everyone in this country so 300 million plus people but we're going to publicly finance it so if you make excessive amounts of money you'll pay a little bit more than the poorest person we will all pay in general 95 percent of us almost all of us will pay what we pay now or less in single payer national health insurance yet we'll have a full range of benefits from the day we're born to the day we die no co-pays no deductibles and no premiums i know it sounds too good to be true but that's that's what's been happening we've been lied to and the truth has been kept from us until very recently now where people are sort of waking up to the reality of what life should be like in this country for everyone. With our current health spending approaching 1.2 trillion and rising daily, we need a change. A single payer system has been estimated to cost about 1.3 trillion per year, but would slower the rate of increase and would cover everybody. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are the main tenets of the Declaration of Independence. These tenants have been fought over by people on the left and the right for decades. I happen to agree with our president, Franklin Roosevelt, who laid out his tenants for life and liberty in what is now known as the Second Bill of Rights. In what was one of his final speeches, Roosevelt stated, among other things, that every American has the right to adequate medical care and the opportunity to achieve and enjoy good health. Unfortunately, President Roosevelt died shortly after that speech, but his legacy lived on through his successor, Harry Truman. Truman championed what was known as the Fair Deal, which included a single-payer national health insurance plan for all Americans. Now obviously this didn't pass, or I might not be making this project, but their spirits live on through progressives like Bernie Sanders. What do you think? Do you think single-payer could ever pass in the United States?